my equestrian friends, it's me, Lisa, the Budget Equestrian. Welcome back to today's video. And today I had a bad day. You know, nothing in particular. It just was not a good day. So instead of coming home and riding Frisbee, I decided to come out to my garage and build something. And you know what? When you have a bad day, coming out and playing with power tools is really fun. And I haven't built a jump in a really long time, so I thought I would build a horse jump. This is what I built. This was really fun to do, and it really helped me to decompress and just kind of focus on a project and not think about everything that happened at work or, you know, just a bad day. So I'm going to show you how you can build a simple horse jump like this. The rails aren't painted yet, but I was able to build this horse jump basically for nothing, just using wood that I already had at home and a couple of other things that I'll show you in just a minute. So the first thing I did was find a piece of wood. This is four by four by eight foot long, and this is going to become a set of standards. So since it's eight foot long, I want to cut it in half so it will be four foot long. So I just mark off where the four foot section is. And the most important thing when you're working with power tools, safety first. So I put on some gloves to protect my hands from the wood. And then I'm using a circular saw just to cut the wood in half. Now with this type of saw, it doesn't go all the way through. So I actually have to turn the lumber in order to get it in two pieces. And to get it completely separated, it takes three cuts. Timber. And once I have the wig cut out, now I'm going to mark off where my holes are gonna be for my jump cups. I like to have the jump cup holes be four inches apart on my standards. It's up to you. You could do three inches, you could do six inches, whatever you want. But I find with having the jump cups every four inches, it gives me lots of different jumping options when I'm setting up my jumps. And to plan of where my holes are going to be, I put the tape measure down the center of the wood. Now this is the drill bit that I like to use. It's an Irwin speed bore spade bit. And then I put that into my drill. And when I'm drilling the holes, I find it works best to have a drill that is plugged in. So this is an 18 volt drill. And then all I have to do is drill the holes. And I try to keep it in the center as much as I can. And also try to make sure that I'm going straight up and down when I'm using the drill to make the holes. And then I flip it over and do it on the opposite side as well. 
just to make sure I get off any of the little excess splintered wood that can get stuck in there sometimes. So that is what it looks like once the holes have been drilled. And it's also important to make sure you take the price tag off the top of the wood. And I want to show you, these are the Dapple Equine one-handed jump cups. They don't take any pins, and they work fantastic with this type of a standard. See how easy that goes on? So now it's time to sand the wood. And I sand it as smooth as I can and make sure there's no rough edges, especially on the top, because I wanna make sure that there's not gonna be any potential places that I could get injured or my horse could get injured. And now this is what the standard looks like being sanded down. But I think you can see there's still some little splintered wood around the edges of the holes that I did earlier. So one way to fix that is to use a Dremel tool. You don't have to do this, but it really makes the jump standard look professional and just perfect. So I've got a Dremel, so I figured I might as well use it. And then I just run the Dremel around each of the holes that I drilled. It just really helps to give it a more polished and clean appearance when the jump standards are all done. And it doesn't take that long, so I take a few extra minutes and just make sure it's as perfect as it can be. So now the upright standards are all done, the only thing left to do is to paint them. And I had some leftover paint from when we painted our house, and I really like this gray color. So I'm using this gray exterior paint on my jump standards. Now I could have used a primer paint first, and typically I would, but I don't have any right now. <laughs> so I decided let's just go ahead and paint the wood with the regular paint. And it makes it a lot easier to have a surface like this that you can be painting or sanding the jump standards on. So I just have some excess pieces of scrap wood that lifts them up off of the countertop so that way I can paint it. That makes the painting easier. One thing that I really like to do is take a small paintbrush and just add some paint to the inside of the holes that are going to be for the jump cups. This way, it looks like it's meant to be that way. It's the same color as the outside of the standard. And again, it just gives it a really polished appearance. So you might be wondering what I'm doing with Christmas tree stands. Well, these Christmas tree stands are going to be the basis for the jump standards. And I did a video a while ago and I showed you guys these, but this is the finished product. So I really wanted to show you how this jump will actually set up using Christmas tree stands as the basis for the jumps. And it's really nice because that makes the jump much more portable. I can take it apart and I can stack the Christmas tree stands on top of each other, meaning they don't take up very much space. 
and then I can lean the standards against a wall, again, meaning it doesn't take up a lot of space. It does take a little bit of extra time to set up the jump standard, but to me, it's worth it for the amount of space that it saves and how portable these are and how lightweight they are and easy to move. And once you have the upright in the Christmas tree stand, it's a good idea to tighten the base a little bit more just to make sure that the upright portion is nice and secure in the stand itself. Then I just put on my jump cups and we're gonna test out these standards and see how they work. I happen to have a two by four laying around and look, a two by four could work as a jump rail if you didn't have any. That could be an interesting jump. Isn't it awesome? Look at the awesomeness. Okay, but seriously, here are landscaping timbers, which will end up being my jump rails. And there is the finished jump. So like I said, this was so easy to build. I came home from work and just spent some time out in the garage coming up with a horse jump. And I really like these standards because they're very lightweight, they're easy to move, and they're also easy to store. They break down so I can stack the Christmas tree stands in a corner and I can stack them on top of each other. Then I can take the upright portion of the standard and I can put that in my barn, I can put it in my tack room, wherever. It's really easy to store them like this. Even though they do take a little bit more time to kind of put together when I'm screwing in the little bottom screw eye things, whatever you call them, it's a lot less labor intensive to build a standard like this. And the portability aspect is really nice. And when you're jumping jumps at home, you don't necessarily need the huge wing standards. Number one, they're very heavy to move. Number two, they're more expensive to make. And number three, they take up a lot of space. Little schooling standards like these are a lot easier to move and they're just easier. I just really like them. And they're sturdy too, they're not going anywhere. So even if Frisbee were to knock into a rail and it came down, the jump standard isn't really gonna go anywhere. You could make the standards more stable and more secure and a little bit heavier, by filling the bases with sand, which is probably what I'll do when I put it outside. Now I am going to paint these rails so that they match my jump standards. And I think I'm going to try to emulate an Antares jump. Antares, is that how you say it? But I'm gonna to try to emulate that and do gray for the main color of the rails and then do some navy blue stripes. I already have the paint, so I might as well do it. And like I said, this was so easy to make. It took me maybe two hours to build the standards. I already had the wood, I already had the paint, I already had the jump cups, and I already had the rails. I just need to paint them. But it was nice to be able to come home from a bad day and make something. It made me feel a lot happier and I have something that I can use outside now. So I'm really excited to finish this jump I'm going to do the rails. I think I will save that for another video for you so you can see the process of painting the rails. I haven't done a jump building video in a long time. I think I'm gonna work on a couple of jumps over the next couple of days and save the writing for this weekend when hopefully it gets a little bit warmer outside. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch this video. Be sure to subscribe to my channel so you can watch all my other DIY projects, product reviews, and horse related videos showing you how to be a budget equestrian too. Again, thanks so much for watching 
and I'll see you in the next video.